Hello everyone, so this will be an in-depth guide to playing Cleric. I've been looking at a lot of Cleric guides and some of them still seem a bit confusing for someone who is new to Dark and Darker or just new to Cleric. I'll be going over stats, perks, spells, and skills, what to use, when to use them, in terms of almost every scenario. So before we move on to the juicy stuff, we need to understand what the difference between a good Cleric is and what a bad Cleric is. Just to keep things simple for now, I won't be going over anything off meta or exotic, but rather what a very traditional cleric should be. So starting, I'm going to talk about what knowledge and spell capacity is and what they do. Knowledge is the stat that will increase your spellcasting speed, increases your spell capacity to increase the amount or tier level of spells you can bring into the game. Knowledge also increases your magical interaction speed, which is how fast you can open portals, use altars, and activate different types of shrines. Knowledge should be the main stat as a cleric you should prioritize. Your spells can be the turning point in fights, whether you're solo or in a group. Clerics start with the base of 18 knowledge and a base of 12 spell memory slots. Having this low of spell memory is not viable, but can also do the trick in some cases. I can give a few tips on how to increase or start every game with a little advantage, enabling you to bring more or better spells in game. Starting out in the lower levels, you probably don't have much to your name, so I'll show you some things that you can do to give yourself an advantage. Going into the merchants and heading over to the tailor, you can often find oracle robes that will give one knowledge. Then, heading to the leathersmith, he also sells rawhide gloves, that also gives one knowledge. Combining these two articles of armor already allows you to increase your spell limitations. Now we fairly understand how knowledge works, we'll move on to spells. I won't read every spell and tell you what they do, you can do that on your own. I will, however, show you great spell combinations that can optimize your gameplay. Lesser Heal and Protection are the two spells that is a must when playing Cleric. Lesser Heal allows you to heal yourself or allies for 15 health. Protection allows you to put on a physical damage shield that blocks 20 damage for yourself and allies. Keep in mind, this only blocks physical damage, not magical damage. Holy Light is a runner-up of basic necessities when playing Cleric. This spell allows you to heal for 30 HP or cast it on an undead for 100 magical damage. This spell is really powerful and can really turn a fight around in just one cast. Keep in mind that this spell can only be casted on allies, so only take this for damaging undead when playing solo, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Divine Strike gives 5 extra damage on a hit. It is a really good spell for those melee classes that can hit repeatedly, rogues, fighters, and yourself as a cleric. This will be the first spell combination that you will be able to take without any bonus knowledge. I will now show another spell combination that I personally would choose over the previous one. As I mentioned before, oracle robes and rawhide gloves will give knowledge and are fairly cheap from the merchants. Buying and equipping these will enable you to make my favorite early game cleric spell combination. With this combination, we will keep lesser heal, protection, and holy light. We will remove divine strike and replace it with holy strike, which will allow us to damage targets within an area doing 15 damage. I'm assuming it's magic damage, but it doesn't say. It will also blind targets that is affected by it as well. It's essentially a flashbang from Call of Duty games. Here's a demonstration. The last spell in this combination is Bless. You can cast it on yourself and allies. It gives 3 strength, agility, and will for 30 seconds. This is a really good buff for all classes. Now that we talked a bit about spells, I want to go over the most optimal skills and perks to use when playing in a group. The first skill that we will take a look at is the spell memory skill. This will allow us to cast spells that we talked about earlier and bring them in the game. This is pretty much what you will use all the time, so get used to it. The second skill is divine protection. It will increase your physical damage reduction by 30% for 4 seconds. No one really likes or uses this skill because of how little time it lasts, and it just isn't best compared to the other skills. 
Holy Purification will do 100 magic damage to all undead within 7.5 meters around you. This counts for vertically and horizontally. This skill is what I use the most. It's one of the best, if not the best skill, a cleric can use in boss fights and PvE. Keep in mind that this won't affect players, but it can clear rooms really fast and really easily. Judgment is a skill that channels on a target, doing 25 magic damage and reduces their movement speed by 20% for 2 seconds. This skill is arguably the best skill for PvP. It destroys fighters and squishy classes. Smite is a skill very similar to the spell Divine Strike, it gives an extra 10 damage on weapon hit for 7 seconds. Currently, Holy Purification and Judgment are the two dominant skills for clerics and have been for a while. You can play around with both and choose which one suits you better, but I personally choose Holy Purification when I'm in a group and Judgment when I'm solo. Let's talk about perks. Clerics have a lot of perks to help teammates and yourself have sustain and survivability. The most go-to perks as a cleric are these four. Holy Aura, which gives you and your teammates who are near you 15 armor and magic resistance. This is a really good perk to take when you're low level until reaching level 5. Reaching level 5, I personally like to take Advanced Healer. This will increase your magical healing by 5, so Lesser Heal will do 20, and Holy Light will do 35. The next skill I like to take is Kindness, which will heal you for 15% of how much you heal an ally. The last skill is Perseverance, which will reduce all types of incoming damage by 3. I'm not sure if this has an effect on the darkness or the storm as people know it by, but I don't believe it does. Going back to talk a little bit more about armor, I would like to point out that a cleric can be really tanky, really squishy, or a little in between. What you prefer is completely up to you, how fast you want to move, or how difficult it is for you to die. Wearing full plate or padded armor will make you really slow but really hard to kill. Wearing all cloth will make you really fast but easy to kill, and your survivability is dependent on your callouts and your positioning. You could do a mixture of both, wearing heavy armor on your head, hands, and legs, while wearing light armor on your feet and torso. This allows decent movement speed and better tankiness as opposed to light armor in all slots or heavy armor in all slots. Despite the armor or jewelry you decide to put on, I always, always, always recommend focusing the stat knowledge, spellcasting speed, buff duration, or anything that affects magical damage. Optimizing these stats will make you an unstoppable force and something to be feared or loved. Weapons are completely your choice, just don't use buckler. Bucklers don't provide much in terms of blocking, you'll find it's hard to block attacks and projectiles. I personally love heater shields, they can almost block your entire body from a distance. Clerics can also use war maws, but there's a lot of cons when using them. Swinging so wide tends to hit your own teammates, war maws are also really slow, and you lose the capability of using a shield for which it is a two-handed weapon. If this is your weapon of choice, I recommend using this in solo play or if you're the only frontliner. Magic Staff is another weapon that clerics start with to be able to cast spells, but clerics can also use spell books, which both can be bought by the alchemist if you don't have one. The majority of clerics in Dark and Dark could prefer spellbooks over magic staffs because spellbooks allow you to move faster and compared. Spellbooks, however, cannot swing a melee attack like magic staffs can. In the most recent patch, magic staffs now give magic damage to increase spell damage, so it's now a pick your poison scenario. That's pretty much all I have for this cleric guide. I will be making a solo cleric guide as well as some off meta builds, so please look forward to those videos. I hope that this video was informative and that you learned something new. If there's a question you have, ask them in the comments and I'll answer the best I can. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm so close to 400 subscribers, so hit those buttons down there and do me a favor. I'd really appreciate it. I also live stream over on Twitch, so please go check out my channel. Link will be in the description. Thank you all for watching. Until next time.